one of the most requested cards for this series. Most people actually asked for the 240, but I could have interpreted that as the Volvo 240 if I really wanted to, rather than the 240SX. You'll notice that this video isn't about the 240SX, but rather the S chassis in general. Also, sorry my fellow Americans, but we got shafted when it comes to the S chassis, so we'll focus on the JDM one for this video with a sprinkle of USDM elements here and there. Just so we can keep things from getting confusing, I'm going to define some things here. There were three main chassis codes we're going to go over, the S13, S14, and S15. Sorry S12 fans, but these are the most popular chassis and the ones getting attention this time around. S chassis cars have a cool way of denoting their trim packages. They use face cards from playing cards. The lowest trim is J for Jack, next up is Q for Queen, and the top trim is K for King. Now let's get into it. The S13 chassis existed from 1988 through 1994 and featured a few variations. The Sylvia originally featured a CA18 DET engine making 167 horsepower and 166 pound-feet of torque. Alongside it was a 5-speed manual transmission and a limited slip differential. Later, the S13 started using the popular SR20 DET engine making 202 horsepower and 202 pound-feet of torque. The S13 had four models using its chassis. The Sylvia was the Coupe, the 180SX was the Fastback, and the Sil80 was a 180SX with a Sylvia front end. Tuners used to convert their cars themselves after crashing their 180's front bumper because the Sylvia bumper was cheaper to buy. This style became so popular that Nissan produced 400 of their own from the factory. Lastly, we have the Mitsuwaka Lesada, which was a classic style luxury coupe. Also there's this thing inspired by the Sil80 called the Odiva that uses JDM Honda Odyssey headlights for the front end. The S14 was produced from 1993 to 2000 with the Zenki and the Kuki front ends. Zenki meaning earlier period and Kuki meaning later period. It also had the SR20 DET making 217 horsepower and 205 pound feet of torque. Some variations here and there with the 270R and the Outtech models giving power and handling upgrades. The S15 was produced from 1992 through 2002. As with all the other S chassis cars, the S15 featured an SR20 DET making 250 horsepower and 220 pound feet of torque. Made it to either the 5 speed manual transmission or a new 6 speed. It had two models. The Spec R and Spec S came with performance and handling upgrades as well. We all know just how popular the S chassis is for drifting. The 180SX or the 240SX in the US is seen at every drift event. I would press you to find one drift event where an S chassis hasn't at least shown up. And why wouldn't it be so popular? It's perfect FR layout with near 50-50 weight distribution and enough power to get you sideways from the factory. Many pro drivers have chosen the S chassis and completely dominated. It's responsible for 7 D1 Grand Prix Championship wins, and it was also used minimally in rally and slightly successfully in circuit racing. Where it really shined was by private parties on the Japanese toge. I mean heck, it was responsible for some of the tensest races in Initial D. I've talked with a few people who thought that the drift tax was an actual federally enforced tax. All drift tax is is the term given to the rise in price of popularly used drift cars. The S chassis has been hit the worst. In my area, a bone stock running high mileage S13 240SX will set you back an easy 4500 USD. That's entirely too much for a 25 year old car. The S chassis is the platform to choose if you want to drift. It's as simple as that. Sure, there are others, but the Sylvia or 240 is the one everybody chooses. Whether you want to keep the stock SR20, or swap 
swap with 2JZ. Or an LS. Or rotary into this thing. It'll still treat you well and be an amazing race car. Like the Fox Body Mustang or BMW M3, the S chassis is the platform to build on from the Japanese market. YouTube's favorite drift car, and maybe favorite car overall, has earned that title. Its perfect drift car formula has brought it to the garages of many an aspiring D1 racer. Without it, the drift community would never be the same as we see it today. No doubt, the S chassis is an amazing car that will continue to stand at the top of the drift car podium. That's it for today's video. I got a few comments about pacing, so I hope this video was better than the last. If you have an idea for the next video, don't forget to comment below. Thanks for watching.